ENT Today Classroom 3. I hope the classrooms are very useful to the youngsters and juniors. I am Dr. Janik Ram from India. And we are going to discuss how does a beginner start doing endoscopic sinus surgery. The inspiration behind this classroom. I made this in 2002 when I silently watched my resident doing FES. This class explains how to avoid basic mistakes made by young FES stars in the making. This class gave me the real facelift as a FES surgeon. It was considered as a Bible. It, had, it has been given in nine countries, the highest honor being in America in Professor Karao's workshop in California. And this is the picture. I thank him for that. And this is a class given in Germany. The topic of the classroom is 15 commandments in endoscopic sinus surgery. What are the do's and don'ts in endoscopic sinus surgery? Any surgery has got a checklist before we start doing it. So does FES. So what are the checklists you have to go through? Number one is the position of the patient. Head up 30 degrees with head in neutral position. You can see three pictures, one, two, and three. The first is head is flexed by placing a sandbag in the occiput. The second is head is extended by placing it under the neck and the head. And third is the neutral position. What's the advantage of each position? If you have a flex position for a beginner, he will never hit the skull base. For an extended position, it's very useful for frontal sinus surgery and skull base surgery. But mo most of the surgeries are done with the neutral position. So it's better to follow the neutral position. And for beginners, it's better to start with the flex position. And for frontal and skull base, it's better to go in for an extended position as seen in figure two. What's checklist number two? Make sure that the scope is held like a flute. This is extremely important. Do not hold the camera because you will have a camera tilt and your scope should be held with the thumb as a fulcrum. So what is checklist number three? The cable of the camera and the light source rest on the left side of the table and make sure it doesn't hang down. You can see that in this picture, the camera and the light source cable lies on the left side because it will increase the weight of the camera if it hangs down and so your hand will go in for fitting. So this is the room setup for endoscopic sinus surgery. Checklist number four, the scope is introduced taking advantage of the elasticity of the ala. I've seen many residents introducing the telescope in the center of the nasal cavity which produces a wobble. So by doing this you will fix the telescope and the wobble is avoided. Checklist number five, the instruments are introduced taking rigid taking advantage of the rigidity of the floor. And why do you do that? Because we separate the telescope from the instrument as well as we prevent the wobble of the instrument of the right hand. So it's better to use the rigidity of the floor when we use the instrument. At no point should the scope and the instrument touch each other or cross over. This is a very, very important commandment because this is the right way to do it. And the wrong way to do it is you crossover and this causes a loss, lot of problems because you can't operate and every time it goes like that you hear a tuck noise and that is actually a problem. This is an endoscopic view of how a crossover phenomenon looks like. So uh, and it also increases the fogging of the telescope. The next important commandment is the zero and the 30 degree telescopes have got a zero view. That means you can look straight ahead. But people find difficulty in using a 70 degree or a 90 degree telescope. And so what you have to do is to create a zero view. That means you have to have the same angle of the telescope while introducing it in the nasal cavity and then move it like an arc, move it like an arc and to reach the part to be operated. So this is how you introduce the telescope. The next commandment is distance between the tip of the telescope and the instrument should be at least 1.5 centimeters. 
Here in this picture you see that the instrument is too far away, around 3 centimeters. Here it's 0.5 centimeter. So it's not good to have a long or a short distance, this is the ideal distance. And so it is always better to maintain a distance, but in skull based surgery it's better to maintain it slightly higher, 2 to 2.5 centimeter. Now commandment number 9, use the same instrument for that particular step and don't keep changing the instruments every time. This is very obvious. Now the tenth commandment is have an aerial view, it's a helicopter view of the part to be operated and the scope should not lie too low. So for example you're seeing this maxillary sinus like a helicopter you're uh, with a 70 degree telescope so you have an end on view. Same way maxillary uh, if you want to see the frontal look from below. The next most important commandment is never hold or pluck tissue if you don't see the tip of the instrument. This I've seen commonly in the frontal sinus. Here in the sphenoid sinus, its uh, tissue is being plucked. It might lead to complications. Commandment number 12, never use the instrument above the scope unless you operate in the frontal sinus. Here, you can see the instrument belly is obscuring the a part to be operated and that should not be done. Commandment number 13, Use adrenaline soaked gauze, unquantified, undiluted amount of adrenaline because adrenaline prevents its absorption by causing vasoconstriction. Several anesthetists are scared but it's not so. So you can use topical application of 1 in 1000 adrenaline. It produces fantastic vasoconstriction. Commandment number 14, use instrument to push the middle terminate, not fracture it, just gently push it. You can see it's not only for the middle terminate, you can use it for any part. You, when you introduce the telescope, you should not fog the telescope and that is why we have introduced this commandment. The last, the final, the most important of all, important of all is at no point should you have a camera tilt because it will give a totally false sense of orientation. This is a picture showing a camera tilt First surgeon who has done just 20 middle metal antrostomies, you can scope it, tip did not advance with the instrument. Now you can see the, the same surgeon putting an inf, uh, I mean infiltrating the nose. You can see that his right hand is wobbling, the left hand is also not steady at all, it's far anterior. You can see the left hand is not advancing as the right hand is moving inside. Now only he is advancing the left hand. You can see now it's too close, the scope is too close. Now it's too far. You can see the camera tilt now. And you can see the scope is seeing the natural ostium from below that is not from an aerial view is not seen that is why the surgeon is not able to see the natural ostium you can see the camera tilt already suction tip is not being seen so once you see this video again and again then you will know what are the difficulties you are facing and that is how we improve. Natural ostium was not seen so the surgeon got frustrated and so usually this is what happens they just blindly puncture the fontanel and they want to do the middle mantle antrostomy.
Why does it look so difficult? It is because the left hand is not giving the view of what the right hand wants. So in this video we basically emphasize on the hand-eye coordination. That's exactly what I want to emphasize through this video. And once we develop that, any step in endoscopic sinus surgery becomes very easy if we follow all the 15 points 